Thanks for joining us. My name is Alex Wonos. I'm the Managing Director for Energy, Resources and Manufacturing at Oricon. Now today it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Chloe Munro. Welcome Chloe. Thank you. Together with Alan Finkel, you have recently shaped um, the future of Australia's energy system by providing 50 recommendations of how to improve the system. 49 are now being implemented. Which one is the most important one that must not fail? Well, um, to start with, I mean, we said very clearly that this was an integrated package, so it's hard to single out one. Um, I've just mentioned the demand side, and I, and I think that the whole approach to managing reliability is probably right now the most urgent and pressing. Um, so what we, what we mean by that is, for, is, is having sufficient energy to meet demand at all times. Uh, what we're seeing in the future are a couple of forces. One is that both demand and supply are becoming more volatile and a lot of this is driven by the weather. So if you look into the future and you talk to the Bureau of Meteorology, there's an outlook there that says demand's just going to get peakier, we're going to have more runs of hot days and we simply can't afford to have our electricity system fail in those circumstances. So the measures that are addressing reliability and better rewarding both consumers and producers for delivering flexible, dispatchable resources are really going to be the ones I think that make a significant difference in the, in the near term. Are there any initiatives that are still outstanding that would really help Australia in its transition of its energy system? Well, I think the whole, the whole Finkel package is very much a work in progress. Um, and I can point to several things that are, that are happening right now that will make, I think, a significant difference. Uh, the first thing that we recommended was having an overarching plan to manage the transition. Uh, otherwise, it could be quite a rocky road. And uh, the energy market operator is currently developing an integrated system plan and is consulting on that. And that's really about identifying renewable energy zones and thinking about where network enhancements would really be valuable to allow those resources to be exploited. Another one, of course, is the National Energy Guarantee. Now, the feedback on that suggests there's quite a long way to go in developing that. But the intent of it is to integrate emissions reduction with reliability is a very important one and it was one that we pointed to in the Finkel review. Uh, what's probably missing in that is having a credible emissions reduction pathway and it's very important that Australia uh, lives up to its commitments but also that business knows what is its operating environment and again that will allow investment to happen uh, and it'll lower the cost of capital if there's less uncertainty about the pathway we're on. So all of those things uh, need to be done. They're all underway uh, and we're just looking forward to them coming to a landing. We have therefore asked a number of our clients what they expect in the future of energy and they told us they want lower costs, higher reliability and lower emissions. So my question for you is, can we have it all? Yes, I believe we can. Uh, but th we have to manage the energy transition to get there. And uh, the, the things that will contribute to that, firstly, that we definitely have the technology. Uh, for example, renewable energy, the costs of that have come down remarkably and it's now the, really the best option for future energy supplies. So the question is how do we integrate that into the existing system and make best use of existing resources? So I think the other technology that's really going to help with that is the dig digitization and the control systems that will allow demand side participation and much better use of distributed resources and that will reduce the need for large expensive investments to support reliability. So really the options are all there and it's a question of orchestrating them through good policies and a good integrated plan. What advice do you have for large consumers of energy? Well there's no doubt that Australian businesses have really been challenged by rising energy costs, both electricity and gas, in recent years. And I think the first thing for them is that they have to recognise that it's a strategic issue that needs to be dealt with at a senior level and it's part of their strategic plan. And there's no question that the large energy users that I speak to in Australia are doing just that. Um, I'd point to a couple of opportunities where they may be able to put real downward pressure on their costs. 
The first one is uh, the opportunity, if they're able to write longer term contracts for at least part of their energy usage, is to start negotiating directly with power producers and enter into power purchase agreements and there are some very good deals to be done in that arena. So commitment's quite important and that can reduce the cost of capital for new projects and that in, in turn flows through into lower energy costs. So that's one option I would talk to, get out there and engage more directly in the energy industry. Uh, and the second op opportunity that I think is really prospective is finding ways where you can shape your load, shape the demand over time in a way that contributes to managing uh, reliability in the system. This is really, uh, I think, a very underdone aspect of the Australian energy market where energy users could be rewarded for contributing to reliability. They don't lose overall productivity, but they use their, their facilities in a much, more, um, a much smarter way and much better integrated with the way that the grid needs to be operated. And that can lower their overall energy costs, as I say, without losing any actual productivity. I guess I'm, I'm optimistic that the, the environment's getting better. I think one thing that has changed a lot is that the business community has become much more pragmatic in the way that it engages with the policy debate, and I think that's very helpful. Uh, certainly the work that's happening through the COAG Energy Council shows a lot of good, goodwill. The fact that they agreed to 49 of the Finkel recommendations uh, the 50th will be addressed by the National Energy Guarantee, if that can be agreed in that context. All of that's quite promising for bipartisanship. Well, I'm involved both at what I think of as the st uh, strategic level and the tactical level. So, tactically, I'm now chair of um, the Solar Energy Funds of the Impact Investment Group. So that's very practical, on the ground investment in large-scale solar. And in between, I'm also uh, working with the energy market operator. I chair their expert panel, which is um, mostly CEOs from across industry. So they give a very real input to AMO in its work as it develops its plans for the future uh, based on their experience. And I think that's quite a practical thing too. Chloe, thank you so much for a really amazing and fascinating insights on the future of energy. Thank you so much for the invitation. And thank you for watching.